folks, welcome to part four of this Luthier's Lair series detailing the Project Babata, a venture into the art of building very short scale bass guitars, and maybe regular short scale, who knows. But the first one has been a, a 25.5 inch scale bass, yes indeed, tuned regularly actually uh, for this episode and for the foreseeable future, I might get some strings that will make it a tenor or a piccolo bass. We'll see. But anyway, uh, by the end of this episode, we should have a finished product and uh, semi finished product. It will be playable anyway, hopefully, and then uh, we'll have a little play at it at the end. See what happens. Let's go. Let's go on with it. Hey, well, after proving that this thing works, will I slosh this with epoxy to seal things up? I don't know. Probably will. You know, just for giggles. All the lines and pencil marks are still on it, but all the holes are drilled now. And so we can uh, scrub this down. And here's the fun part. We can start screwing around with finishing and stuff because it's, you know, it's kind of a throwaway body. The hate the wood. This the pine. This pine is too sappy. You know, it's never going to settle with any sort of finish at all. Um, it's like construction pine. You know, it's great for uh, weather resistance and stuff, but uh, not for uh, being a base body. So, what have I got out? Well, I'm going to sand this down to just 150. Using I've got two of these out because. What happens is, <laughs> this wood is so sappy that uh, I end up sanding glue and it gums up the paper, you know. That's how bad it is. But, you know, I'll take off uh, the rough edges and stuff and get it into some sort of shape. And then I'm going to try experiment with different um, uh, stains and maybe dyes, something like that. It's just going to be a lot of fun, this part. So, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, of course, this is really crap uh, here, just to get that going, you know, whatever, it's fine, it'll get done properly when it goes into production. Uh, of course, the back scallop, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to leave it, uh, actually I might dig a bit deeper into it, uh, we'll see, we'll see, but I'm going to have a lot of fun anyway, okay, so. Catch you later. So you can see why I don't like this wood at all, right? The sanding discs, after about five minutes, are covered in glue. It's like the sap is like glue and it's just there and it never cures. So I'm going to do the best I can with this body. It won't be the final body, that's for sure. But you know, the experiment worked. So we're fine. I'm just going to have fun now and splash some, uh, I've been dying to uh, try out this uh, classical, classic black stain I have. Classic black stain, yes. It, it looks really good for natural wood, so I'm going to have that on there and see how this wood absorbs it. It won't tell me much, but it's going to be a lot of fun, right? Okay. So here we go then, this could be a complete disaster, <laughs> let's see what happens, I've never stained this sort of wood before, let's see what happens, it's down to 150 grit, glue notwithstanding, and uh, let's see what we get with a little sponge brush here, well a big sponge brush actually, because I'm just going to go ballistic here, I don't give a shit really about this wood. I know I can make another body pretty easily out of a nice wood, like a, a lighter wood, maybe poplar or something. Uh, but let's see, let's see what happens. So let's uh, direct down to here. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> it's indeed. Oh, that's going on nice actually. Actually, it's pretty good. It's sitting on top. 
The stain is sitting on top. That's fantastic. Let's see how fast the wood absorbs it. Let's see how quick the grain comes through, if it indeed does come through. Oh, there's the knot, which I'm not going to green fill. Uh-huh. 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 Oh yeah, now I see a part of it drying. Now, there is a part drying. And yeah, you can see the grain through it. Actually, I might get away with this. Depends how the wood reacts afterwards. I'll just cover up the bit that was drying so that you'll be surprised when it does. Just joking. And I'm really slathering this on. Uh, because I do plant to sand it afterwards, you know. Let's just make sure the contours are right. Just in case I want to do the edges a different colour or something, you know. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Put that there. Oh, nearly. A shop towel. I'll squeeze the crap out of this because any of that in there just now. Now I'll use a solvent in a bit. Right, let's see how this dries, right? I'm not going to wipe any excess off, I'm just going to let this wood soak this in and see what happens. It should be really interesting. Let's cover this just now. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> Well, I don't know if you can see this, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'm getting a really surprising result with this. This is like 15 minutes after I applied the, I really just lathered this uh, coat of classic black stain. Uh, I think it's varathane. Make it, yeah, yeah, right there. See, see that then, right, right. And I'm getting a rather striking um, high-end matte finish look on this base. And you can see where it's not drying in quicker. That's where the a lot of the sap is in this pine. I still believe that it won't be a reliable uh, wood for um, a base body. But it sure does look pretty, doesn't it? It really does. It, it looks really spectac, you know. So I'll just go ahead and do the whole lot like that. And, you know, um, after it's finished and settled and I've played it in and stuff like that, I'll make a decision on it. But, of course, I'm not going to use this wood for the uh, production body. And I think I am going to go into production with this because it's it's turned out to be remarkably um, stable and successful, even with this rubbishy uh, wood that can, it's like taffy, you know, you can, this is an important part, you know, you can press dents in it and stuff, but it looks really nice and I might actually sear this with a heat gun. So actually, let's go and try that. Let's try that right now. Screw it. You know, let's, I'm just winging this. So let's zoom out, get the heat gun. And let's put this, put this on high. Oh. That's remarkable. I know what's happening here. I'm going to do a little more on this and then I'll tell you what's happening. It's lovely, it's really uh, quite amazing. Alright, that's enough. 
Okay, so what's happening is, where that bubbled to the top, and, it, and it's dry on a lot of the parts. Now, that's, oh, it's still tacky. But uh, what's happening is, where the sap is in the wood, the grains coming back to the, uh, the dye, shit, the stain is coming back to the surface again, because it can't penetrate the sap. But what's happening is, I am chemically bonding the stain with the sap, and when it sinks back in, it might be okay. Not subsurface though, okay, you know, like, uh, 0.1, 0.2 millimeters below the surface of the body may be unstable, and that's why I don't trust this wood. But I'm telling you, the effect is amazing. It's really amazing to see. There's a big glob there, but you just go, <laughs> mind you, you know. I'll sand that off, and I'll get a big glob on the on the sandpaper. But hey, I don't know. I'm gonna try and burn that bit off. Hold on. Yeah, look at it flow. Look at it flow. Yeah, and if I if I change the angle of attack with the heat gun, it will spread it. Spreads it very evenly. So I'll let that settle for a bit. Maybe about an hour. See what happens. Mm. I feel a new technique coming up. Yes, that's the thing about prototyping. You can, you know, you haven't spent a lot of money, and you can try various things out. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna go over it with uh, some a little bit of a mineral spirit wash to see how much actually comes out of the wood afterwards. Look at the state of me. What? A Clert, as they would say in Scotland. You're a clerty bugger. So you are. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Not bad at all. Back soon. Okay, to finish this off, really, not going to be bothering anymore with the finish, except for I'm going to put a coat of wax on it. Wax paste. Best way to get wax paste going is heat it up a little bit the heat gun, uh, mop it up and just rub it on there, leave it for about half an hour and then buff it out and then let it set. A couple of days, something like that. That's all. So I'm just heating up the wax now. And there it goes. The thing about a wax finish as well is you can uh, Once you've applied it, once you've applied it, you can actually um, reheat it and resurface it. So, there we go. Loads of that on there just now. Let's just go around that and rub this wax in. Sort of smooth it out a little bit. What a fun. Not being too careful with this. See, it's not really important. What's important is structurally sound and everything else is working correctly. But, you know, I might want to auction, auction it, so it's worth putting a bit of wax on it. And then we'll let that harden for about, let's say 20 minutes or so. 20 minutes to half an hour. And then we'll buff it up. Put a little bit more on, actually. Around the side there. Not being too careful. Said, not bothering too much. Put a little 
dad there. Some more there. Some more there. And you see that drying up already. It's really quite a good uh, finish to work with if you like matte finishes. And it's good. I mean, of course, the more and more wax you put on, you can build up coats of wax and you can get a semi gloss, a nice semi gloss out of it. It is a somewhat delicate finish, but you know, you can always re wax your guitar. Or you can buy some wax and you can wax it yourself, really, if you so desire. Okay. We'll come back to that in about 20 minutes to half an hour. Brilliant. Okay, I got a probe with fluff in it for tapping the pickups. I don't have the protective plastic cover on it now, and I've angled. Anyway, no, I'll get into that later. Uh, and I got my, my lead, and I got my prep bass amp uh, right here, you know. Now, all I need to do is plug it in. So I'm going to plug it in. Wow, that was kind of... That's better. Switch it on. Turn everything up max. Should have two pickups. Bit of fluff. Yeah. Let's turn the neck pickup down. Oh, brilliant. That's good. Bridge pickup down. Nothing. Neck pickup up. Tone all the way down. Whoa. Bridge pickup up now. Tone up. I mean, I've got the volume on the amp very high, and there's hardly any noise. Hardly any noise, in fact. Yeah, that's good. Good. Mm-hmm. Now we can assemble. <laughs> Okay then, that's it. Um, all that remains for me to do is to put dot markers on the on the neck here, and that's about it, really, for this prototype. I might, you know, put some fresh on the neck, you know, if I indeed I'm going to auction it, which I probably th I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'll put probably put a finish on the neck, but it's kind of ready to play. I just did a setup on it and uh, filed down the uh, high frets, there's a couple of high frets like I mentioned but looks very nice so we can go have a play at it and see what it's like shall we? I think so, I think it's a good idea
Well, that's about it for part four, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Today's the day I'm going to see Victor Wooten in the culture room in Fort Lauderdale, so that'll be fun, yes. That'll be the fourth time I've, I've seen Victor, met him once. Pleasant chap, great guy. Anyway, like I said, that's all for part four. I don't know if there'll be a part five unless there's other things I want to just tweak and do for this venture anyway. The next venture will be a regular short scale base, I'm thinking, uh, and we'll go from there. So, I hope you enjoyed this series, if this is the last part. And, you know, I hope if you're watching me for the first time here that I've earned your subscription on the, on the Tubi here. Uh, if not, and you're already subscribed, keep watching. Got some great projects coming up. With that said, the usual, stay safe, be good. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers. Bye-bye.